thing. And as Canadians, we get to celebrate Thanksgiving twice because ours happens in October and the American one happens in November. And we're excited because we get to do it all again. Who doesn't like an excuse to make a turkey and a pecan pie all over again? Thanksgiving times two. This is our second go around. I'm I, fine with it. I like it just as much. <laughs> The second time. I kind of like it a little bit better because you get your first one over with and then you're like, ooh, this is what I'd like to do different. Yeah, ooh, good point. Revising, learning, changing, learning, growing. growing. It's an ever evolving river. <laughs> <laughs> an ever evolving river? <laughs> All right, the base of a good pecan pie has to be the crust, okay? You can get a store-bought crust, but it's not gonna be the same. Now, there's a gadget that I love to use when I make a crust. It's a pastry <laughs> cutter. It gets a little messy. You just get flour all over yourself and the kitchen. And this one's an antique. A lot of people don't have these things. So if you don't have a pastry cutter, you can absolutely use like two forks, but it's not the same. No, you know what you could use? Your hands. The reason why I don't use my hands is because your hands will heat up the butter and you need the butter to be in little pieces to keep that crust nice and flaky. Are you new to my hands? Ice cold, baby. 24-7, yeah. these things get the job done. Maddie's the ice queen. Thought, well, I don't like that, but I'll <laughs> go with it. All right, secret number two to a fantastic pie crust, white vinegar. You might not think that, and it might be like, ooh, this is weird, we're not making pickles, but white vinegar is gonna create that ultra flaky crust. It's a little secret. They used to call me the pie princess, just saying. They did. Yeah. Oh, I did. I, a lot of people did. You're not the only one. Okay, so I do get in there with my hands. I'm taking back the words I just said. But just for a second, because you have to form it together. See? So why dirty something else, even though I do like your antique little vintage tool here, just for the looks, it's cute. Use it as decor. You don't need it for a pie crust. You're, the only reason I'm using my hands is to form it into a dough, but you're not making a pizza, so you don't want to knead it too much. It needs to be nice and supple. I would say you can even grate in butter. You can if grate you wanna, it. And just skip that little thing. You can grate and you it. Can't, that thing never gets in there. The pastry cutter never gets in there it properly. It does get in there properly. It does it. It does. Okay, excuse me. So you do want to make sure that you rest the, the pie crust quite How long? How an hour. Hours? Oh, you just did an hour? Just an hour. And I like it, an hour's fine because then it gives you time to get the filling together. So not like a super amount of time, get yourself organized. That's not, and it's, you're just, it's chilling in the fridge, it's rest time, you're not really doing anything to it. You know why I love a pecan pie, or any pie for that matter, for Thanksgiving? What's, what's that? Because it's a make ahead. Yes! This is one of my favorite parts, forming it into the crust. You so can you get didn't, it. Don't, you didn't do any particular like pinching technique. No. You See, and again, sometimes the pinching looks nice, but this is just keep making it easier. Nice and, I like it rustic. I don't yeah. want this to look like a store-bought pie. So one of the important parts to a good pecan pie is weighing down the crust while you you pre-bake it. So you, if you have pie weights, uh, all the power to you. I was just gonna say, uh, who is storing pie weights? I don't have those. So what I use is an old bag of beans that I don't plan on cons consuming. These beans are really fibrous. I didn't, I never liked them. I used them once. So they've been sitting in my pantry ever since. So I was like, let's put these to good use. You can't eat them after you bake them though because they get, they're already cooked essentially. Um, but they just go into some parchment paper in the dough, put it in the oven 15 minutes, and then you have to remove them and then put hit it in there for another six minutes. That ain't bad at all. No. That ain't bad at all. And again, in amongst this time, you're working on your yams, you're working on your carrots, you're working on your other side dishes. So that's why this is great to be doing while you're making your whole feast. Yes, for this recipe, we're using pecans right from the source. So this was a special treat for us because we don't get pecans like this here in Canada. The size difference alone is oh like out goodness. of this world. When people say size doesn't matter, it does when it comes to pecans. Yeah, so look at, how, look at these monsters. I've never seen a, a pecan that big. Did I snack on a few while I was making this? Absolutely, I did. Yeah, because it's not just the size. Do they taste delectable? Absolutely. They're more, I would say, like they're like a pecan flavor jacked up. Yes. Like more, like more nutty, more like they're, they're, not, they're unsalted and unroasted. And that's when you know if you can snack on a nut that's not salted and not roasted, you know it's flavorful. Oh, yeah. So a couple secrets to this pecan pie in particular that may not be traditional. I added in a whiskey vanilla. <gasps> If you oh, your vanilla. If you okay. don't have that though, you could just use add some vanilla and some whiskey. And of course, <laughs> being the good Canadian girl that I am, this is maple syrup from my farm. You know I had to slip that in there. I think it's a match made in heaven. Yeah, so just look at that consistency. That smelled absolutely unreal. Mm -hmm. Gone with whole pecans in this recipe. You can chop them up, but I wanted to see the fact that these mm -hmm. are so big and beautiful. I was gonna say right off the bat, I'm liking that you went with that. For this recipe, we're using smoking pecan pellets. 
So we wanted to show you as viewers what these break down to. So this is how pecans grow. In the shell, they're partial, the shell is partially taken off, so you can see the pecan right in there. Again, look at it's like the, the size of my fist. Yeah, they're massive. Okay, so then the shells get taken off the pecans, and then the pecans get separated out for consumption. This is what the shells look like. Normally, you're looking at that and you're like, well, this is just garbage, so I'm just gonna dispose of that. Yeah. But the people at Smokin' Pecan have thought of a cool way to use them for barbecue. Yes. Enter the pecan shell pellet. And so they're, they're pushed into these little pellets that have such a rich coffee, very dark red roasted smell to them and look to them. That was the first thing I noticed when I opened the bag. Mm -hmm. Color. Is the color. Yeah, me too. So unlike traditional pellets, regular pellets that I've worked with, we've worked with a lot of different pellets, they're like dark, they're like light brown. They're like a very, very like a sandy color almost. These ones, they look shinier. Mm -hmm. And they're darker, and they had like a coffee butter pecan smell to them. To there's me. no filler. There's no filler, so I think that's that's literally just the color of the pecan shell that you could have that, that you saw, smushed down into a, a pellet. Look at that color. It smelled to me very reminiscent of a bag of coffee. Loading up the Ninja Wood Fire Outdoor Oven. I'm using the bake function for this because after all, we're baking a pie. Make sure you hit that wood fire button because we want to make we're using pellets with this recipe. I thought pecans, pecan pie, pecan pellets. This is going to be a match made in heaven. Oh yeah. Hit that ignite button and Bob's your uncle. You got some time to relax. Did you play around with the temp? I did put it to 375. Okay, so it, yeah, when you hit the bake, it's at 350, I think. I think it's at 300 actually. Okay, so you went up to 375. I you increased thought this it. was going to be hot and fast. Not super fast, but I did it was I did want it higher than 300. We don't want it in there for 1800 no. years. So look at how much smoke is coming out of when I when I opened up the the front door, I was like, "Wow, that is a lot of smoke coming out of here." And as it already I could smell that they smell different. Different mm -hmm. from traditional pellets. I noticed that too when I was um, smoking the turkey. It to me it smelled more authentic. Like it smelled like I was like cooking on an offset grill as if I were using pecan wood. Yeah, it had a very, very strong, rich flavor smell to me. That's the only way I can describe it. So I had to help myself to some snacks. Oh, of course. As While the grill's firing up, have a little bit of a snacky snack. I had to. I had to. I could not stop eating these. They're absolutely spectacular. They're just so rich and flavorful. Very, very buttery. Now I wanted to see if I could just like take one and pop it up into the air and into my mouth. Did First you? try. Buddy! <laughs> yes! Impressive! Oh, 25 minutes? No. So after 25 minutes, I wanted to check on it and look at what it, here's what it looks like after 25 minutes. Okay, so it's not quite there yet. Not quite there, but you guys know, they say if you're looking, you ain't cooking, but I had to look because I we could smell it. We always do. We always say that and then we look. So this is after about 37 minutes total. Okay, still, that's still quicker than a traditional pecan pie. Yes. And you want to take it out when the center is still jiggling a tiny bit, um, but it is set. You know, you can tell that it's set. It's night perfectly golden brown, that beautiful dark golden color. And the key to a good pecan pie is to let it cool for as long as you mm -hmm. can before you cut into it. Otherwise, it will just goo everywhere. So I would say when I'm hosting Thanksgiving, I get this d done first thing in the morning. Okay, and then you can get started on the turkey star of the show. Although this does look like this is also the star. I'm, I said this looks like it too. I'm not trying to take your light, buddy. I think you did. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we are cooking a 10 pound turkey in the Ninja Woodfire Outdoor Oven. We've cooked it in the grill before. It was a tight squeeze, so I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit worried about this cook as well because um, it is quite, this is a 10 pound turkey, but it looks big. Yeah, but the one we tried to make before was I think double the size of this one. It was, I don't know what the heck we were thinking. So we ended up having to break it down, but I don't know about you, but to me, Thanksgiving needs that presentation of a full bird mm -hmm. on the table. I, it pained me to think about like cutting this up into parts, I wanted it to be whole. Especially when you, when it's got such a beautiful golden color, you want mm -hmm. people to see that. A hundred percent. Now I will say when we do our turkeys, we are on team unstuffed. Let us know in the comments what team you're on because I know people are like hard and fast on this rule. Oh you're yeah. You're either a stuffed person or you're an unstuffed gal like we are. But I will tell you, there are reasons that we don't like our turkey stuffed. It doesn't come down to whether or not if you like the stuffing in there, it's because if you stuff a turkey, it takes so much longer to cook and the turkey itself will dry out by the time the stuffing is fully and safely cooked on the inside. Mm -hmm. So if anyone out there who's on team stuffed, 
you might want to come over to Unstuffed. So much easier. All you need to do is add in some flavor enhancers. We love going with citrus. Lemons, oranges, even limes in there grow fantastic. I have lemons in the house, so I put some lemons in there, some onions, and some flavorful herbs, such as um, sage or rosemary. For the outside, a lot of people think of different things when it comes to the skin and like what you could put under the skin. We're simple gals. Get some olive oil, get a good rub, slather it on, tap it in. Don't rub it all over because you'll rub it all off. Tap it into place and then that's all you need. No basting, no butter under the skin or anything like that. That's what ensures a crunchy skin and we are all about that crunchy turkey skin. And not to harp on the not stuffing again, but if you don't, oh, she's going there. But if you don't stuff, it cooks a lot quicker too because the airflow's getting in. It's going all around. That's the point. The quicker, the better. Because at Thanksgiving, you want to spend time with your family and you want to get the dinner on the table. You don't want to be at the grill or in the kitchen the whole time. And you don't want to be throwing out that neck or any of the innards that may come with your turkey. You could use them for gravy, you could use them for other dishes, but the main point is do not throw those away. Who? Let us know in the comments below who gets the turkey neck in your house. In our house, it's Barbecue Mama. We don't, I don't think I've ever even had it because I always just give it to Barbecue Mama. I, don't, I think everybody else knows too. They don't have any chance at getting it. Yeah, a lot of people, that's how it goes in a lot of families. You call the neck, no one else gets to ever try it. We're cooking the turkey on the Ninja Wood Fire Outdoor Oven. This is my first experience with the smoke and pecan pellets. Like Kiki, I was blown away by the color. The color is like a dark brownish mahogany color. I literally had to get in there, touch it, smell it. I even had to give it a little bit of a taste. I had to. You licked it? I licked it. <laughs> you know that we have actual pecans that you can eat and not have to lick the pellet. Okay, but you're telling me you were not curious about what it tasted like? No. <laughs> This is coming from the girl who ate dog food as a kid. <laughs> and I think tried so the- So did you. And I think- You wanna start telling secrets, buddy? You wanna start tried telling You tried the, she tried the cat food too. <laughs> I'm a curious girl and I will have you know, they don't taste like pecans. They are just the shell. Like we said, no filler, just the pecan shell. Now I cooked the turkey on the, on the um, bake function. Didn't play around with the temperature. Left it at 350. I will let you know that I learned something new about this cooker. What? It only goes up to two hours. Oh, I didn't so know that. So I was a little bit concerned. I was like, is this bird gonna cook in, in two hours? Because yeah, that's, that's quick. That I'm very- Even for Ninja. Yeah, that is really confusing. Okay, so look what happened. I was like, oh no. <laughs> I wanted the whole bird, and ain't nothing was stopping me from getting that whole bird. There's a slight panicky tone to this now, though. There I was. can feel it. There was. <laughs> look, look. It was cold. I was angry. I was like, what can I do here? So I initially had the bake rack on that I thought was mandatory because you want like airflow to be around the bird. Yeah. But in desperate times, you do what you got to do. You needed that inch. I was. I was like, yep, yeah, let's get the roast pan out. We need some valuable height here, okay? Yeah. So I just got that out. Still wasn't working, but I could tell it was going to. I jammed her in. <laughs> I jammed her, look. <laughs> you better wash those gloves I afterwards. Did. Mrs. I did, look, look, oh. they're gross. Okay, yeah. Okay, but sometimes, like cooking, cooking is sometimes like life. Sometimes if you just force something a little bit, I think it could work sometimes. <laughs> And I think it's worth it because you can't get smoke flavor for making a turkey in your oven. You just Absolutely can't. Absolutely not. So a lot of people are like, oh, why would I take this effort and take my turkey outside? Why wouldn't I just make it the traditional way in an oven? No. Look at that color. Okay, and that's only after 40 minutes. So I saw, I thought, I saw this and I was like, I'm getting, it's browning a little bit too quickly for my liking. I'm just gonna put some tin foil over the top because I knew that the inside wasn't cooking as quick as the outside was browning. That's what tin foil's there for. Don't tuck, don't really tuck it under because then you're gonna be steaming. Just put some under so then that controls the browning process. You can do that with pie too, but I didn't need to. You can do that around the edges if the crust is browning too quickly. Tin but... foil's a savior. So I like to cook my turkey till what, between 175 to 180. That's my preference. You cook yours to how you like it. I let this cool outside. It was a very cool day. I let it cool outside for a little bit, but I had to get right in there because I was so curious about, yeah, the, pe the pecans are delicious. Yeah, the pellets look good, but what the heck is it making the food taste like? I was curious to know that as well. I got in there and I was literally baffled. 
If you have a pellet grill, you know that pellets produce a certain flavor of smoke that you're like, it tastes like smoked food, it's delicious, but it does have a very unique flavor. This to me tasted more like an authentic barbecue flavor. It's subtle. I notice even um, even color a huge color difference. Mm -hmm. From the pellets that we've used in the past compared to the smoke and pecan pellets, the color was, had, was way more like a, like you said mahogany. Taste wise, it was delicious. I would definitely recommend these because if you're looking for it doesn't taste like strong. If you're thinking like does it have like a strong barbecue flavor? No, we always say we're not trying to eat something that tastes like the bottom of a barbecue. Nobody wants that flavor. This was subtle. This was flavorful. It was extremely comparable to a pecan wood. Pecan wood is one of our favorite woods to smoke with. And it was very similar. Who would have thought the shells would mimic the flavor of the wood? Mm -hmm. When you're when you're making a pecan pie, you don't want it to have such an overwhelming amount of smoke to it. You just want the smoke to lightly kiss it and give it that little bit of, ooh, what is that? Mmm, what is that? <laughs> is it? Mm -hmm. It's very light, very subtle, but the smoke is definitely there. If there's somebody in your house that's like, I don't like smoked food. They're gonna like that. From two Canadian girls who had to put a little bit of maple syrup in the pecan pie, we hope you've enjoyed this video and we hope you and your family have a fantastic Thanksgiving this year. And I hope Kiki made more because we were supposed to share this with Barbecue yeah. Mom and Barbecue Pops, but, but I think this is mine. That's not yours. Mm -hmm. No, stop. Ew, stop mine. getting the fork in everything. Mine. It's mine. <laughs> Oh my gosh, do it for the video! <laughs>